And welcome back, everyone. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, and this is Entrepreneuring. And my guest today is a PhD candidate at the New Mexico State University, a researcher and the inventor of two technologies, Nasser Kazini. Welcome to Entrepreneuring. Thank you for joining me today. It's great to be with you. I'm, I'm so I'm so glad you could join us. Uh, we are, uh, you know, peel back the fourth wall a bit. People don't know how uh, necessary we record this. We are the first one of the day. Uh, and uh, I know I've had my coffee, so let's uh, let's. <laughs> I let's... wish I had mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I'll have to uh, I'll have to upgrade the, uh, the 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 green room that I, I don't have control over. But um, anyway, Nasir, so what are we uh, what are we going to be focusing on today? I I think it's a good start to start with my background, yeah. Yes, ab ab absolutely. You know, what kind of what what brought you to uh, to NMSU? And um, I also hear a tale of uh, you working with advisors and co-inventors. So I'd also like to know how you kind of how you got to meet them and started working with them as well at NMSU. Yes, I I did my undergrad in our country in my country Iran, and I got my degree uh, nineteen ninety eight. I. It was chemical engineering uh, focusing on petrochemical industries. I, then I moved to, in, to the petrochemical industries. <laughs> really, it was a fit job with my degree. And I worked there for some, let's say, 10 years. And then I decided to start my grad study and I went to Turkey in 2008 and start my master's study over there. And I had the chance to visit with wonderful people that are doing research on material science. And it formed actually the foundation of my research's life, let's say, uh, doing research in material science. I, there they focused on ceramic and how to synthesize and process the ceramics. But yet the, let's say, the foundation of material science was something that I learned over there. And then I moved here in 2011 and started my PhD study. I, it was really a big chance. I, I didn't know Dr. Gesimi, my advisor, before. I just got to know him uh, via the website of our uh, department and with the telephone call he accepted to give me a position in his center actually he was the director of IWE work which which is a center under KME uh, uh, again he accepted even though there is a center for research on water and energy but I could uh, continue my research on material science over there, but I just tuned it to work on a, let's say, material science for the environmental uh, purpose, let's say. Okay. I, yeah, the, the second inventor, Dr. Jalal Rastikari, is a, a research scientist over there, and I got to know him over there. And later, Dr. Fudazi uh, actually joined to our university some two, two years ago, and I got to know him over there then. And again, he, had a, he joined to our uh, group. And this formed a research group and group a team of in inventors. Yes, gotcha. So that's how you, that's how you you got together with this uh, kind of trio of uh, of inventors. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So so you sort of uh, started working on uh, more environmental based projects after you got together with everyone. So, uh, I remember I, we had a meeting that you know the. Um, uh, faculties of our, of our department were coming and introducing their research. A, a faculty, I believe Dr. Deng, he came and uh, introduced a wonderful uh, adsorbent materials, metal organic framework then. 
And later I understood it had a big potential, this material actually, to help mitigating the, you know, global warming uh, problem with uh, capturing carbon dioxide from the uh, carbon dioxide em em emitter uh, resources, let's say, sources. Great. So, so did this just come about kind of naturally in the research, or was this the original goal of the project was to find a way to mitigate CO two? Actually, there was not a proposal uh, specifically about this uh, purpose. But my background and this type of, uh, I mean, research could just uh, have both the advantages my uh, uh, research interest and the goal of the centers that I was, I want, uh, I was, I'm now working in and IWM work on I mean. So uh, the advisor, Dr. Gassimi, accepted my uh, uh, research program and I started there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, so w w where is that at now? What, what, what is, um, what kind of sets apart this particular tech as far as uh, dealing with CO2 emissions? Uh, what makes it kind of re revolutionary? Uh, the point is, you know, uh, the conventional way to capture carbon dioxide was very energy intensive. And it cost a lot for, let's say, uh, power plants as the biggest uh, emitter of carbon dioxide to apply this type of method. And they needed an alternative that is uh, uh, cost efficient actually. So the former approach, which was a chemical based approach, people are now working on to improve it and let's say to decrease the cost with that. But there was uh, and that uh, alternative, which was adsorption, I mean, the, the, uh, by solid porous materials. Formerly, two groups was developed, and a very well known group is zeolites. But the problem with those is those are um, the let's say surface area that they are providing is limited. But this group metal organic frameworks and that started to grow from the beginning of the century from let's say 2000 something they inherently provide a huge surface area and this is really interesting a, a typical let's say a MOF one gram of um, those MOF can provide a surface area that can cover a football pitch these are the, the, you said, the, the metal organic group? Metal organic framework group, MOFs. Gotcha. Yes. That, that's, 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 that's insane. That is, that's a massive <laughs> amount of, yeah. uh, of space. That's really massive. So uh, it is a good uh, starting point to work in. People developed a, a different type of MOFs. A, a, even though they are providing a huge surface area, but they had their own deficiencies. Maybe two of them is, and one is selectivity, and the other is uh, the robustness of the uh, structure to withstand the harsh separation conditions that happens in power plants. Uh, for the first one, I can say that, you know, uh, the carbon dioxide emission sources does not provide carbon dioxide in pure form. It's mixed with other gases. So you need to first separate and then store the gas. So when you want to expose the flow gas, let's say, to your material, your material should be uh, should selectively separate carbon dioxide from the other one. Otherwise, that surface area itself is not an advantage. Right, and it's not absorbing what you want it to absorb. Yeah, but, you know, suppose you have a sur huge surface area, but both gases can get and seed uh, on those on the surface area. 
it's not an advantage. Right. That surface should just absorb one and let the other go. With this, you can do separation first. So, uh, uh, more important the surface area, you know, uh, the the selectivity was a, a very important factor. Uh, we worked on a subgroup of metal organic frameworks. It has been known as the Zeolitic Imidazolate Framework. Again, let's abbreviate this one as ZIF. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. So, ZIFs is a... Uh, uh, these are a subgroup of metal organic frameworks, and but the point with this, in addition of having the inherent property of huge surface area, they have robustness of structure property. Let's say they are thermally and chemically um, unstable material in the condition of the, uh, let's say, um, flue gas that is emitted from power plants, okay? So, so far we could solve uh, two problems. One was uh, a huge surface area and the other was a material that are stable chemically and thermally uh, when it is exposed to the flue gas. But the third one, which was important one, was selectivity. Right, and did the, the ZIFs have the selectivity you were looking for? We developed a subgroup of now ZIFs that are very selective. A, the, the ZIFs that we developed, um, uh, when you expose it to methane, nitrogen, or hydrogen, uh, comparing to isostructures, the, the adsorption amount is almost the same, even a little bit lower. But when you expose it to carbon dioxide, the amount that they absorb increases something 700 folds. Wow. Yeah. How long did it take to, uh, to develop that, that particular, like your, your, your version of the ZIF that, that had that, that massive increase in CO2 absorption? Yes, I can say it took something two years to work on carbon uh, on ZIFs to understand their structure, do a thorough literature review to understand the, what pe people has done yet, and understand the I mean the original and untouched let's say group of ZIFs that nobody has worked on, it. and then try to understand the properties of this new group. And when we uh, understood this uh, wonderful, then let's say, uh, property for this type of the ZIFs, our life with <laughs> Arrowhead started. <laughs> I, I, was, I was, okay, all right. So, so how did Arrowhead help you once, once you, uh, you, you developed this, uh, you developed your ZIF? Uh, for a long period, we, we knew this material for some months and we were discussing about in our group meeting. Uh, always we had this concern in the deep of our heart that if somebody even know a little clue about uh, the type of material that we want to work with, they can easily go and copy it. That's, okay. that, that was the big concern, so, you know. So, so, I'm, uh, so did Arrowhead help you patent it? Yeah, actually, again, Dr. Gassimi here helped me. I didn't know what patent there is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he told that, you know, go ahead and patent it with Arrowhead. And uh, it was a big relief for us. Uh, we just had a meeting with Terry and two other uh, students, Shanta and Francis. Um, we started our application and, you know, the process first, uh, I had several meetings with Shanta and Francis specifically and Terry sometimes she joined us and we developed our uh, uh, material that we needed to have IPEC meeting and then unanimously IPEC uh, except, uh, recommended this um, uh, idea to get patented. And first we had a 
be applied for provisional patent. And after a year, last October, uh, we just switched to application for utility patent. Now it is on the process for utility patenting. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so that was uh, that sounds like it was a bit of a learning curve for you, but but Arrowhead were were able to to work with you and help guide you through the patenting process. Yes, exactly. We 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 had other uh, choices to I mean patent our uh, technology, but Arrowhead here had a great resources to help us not only patent it, even find a way to commercialize it. Let's see. Oh, that's 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 great to hear. So now that uh, now that you have you know you you have your technology you, you you have it patented you have your utility patent uh, pending, um, what's next? How, how, I mean, how do you think this application or how how do you think this tech is going to impact the world? Yes, I, in addition of you know patenting, oh, we got to know if uh, a program with NSF. It was NSF I core program. A, actually, it uh, it had all the all the thing that somebody needs to uh, start up a business. Okay, and again, Aero had introduced this uh, program to us, and Terry uh, mentored us business uh, as a business mentor and. Dr. Fudazi SPI, and we went through this program. With this, we understood the exact status of carbon capture in the world, even, and how we should go through, uh, a, let's say, a um, routine program to a, let's say, to a implement our idea for carbon capture. Really the material for uh, capturing carbon dioxide with low energy and very high a capacity to absorb carbon dioxide is a big need in, in the world. Especially with the program that you know the United States you know developed clean power plants and a, a huge investment that DOE are doing on uh, a, you know developing the technologies for carbon dioxide capturing and storage I think we are right in a good period of time to develop our idea now we can say that we are let's say close to benchmark uh, stage and if we can develop this idea to a pilot plan and then the commercial scale it's ready to go wow and and it, it does seem like you're on the right track right because it's my understanding you you you've received quite a quite a bit of recognition in the press about about your technology exactly you know when we uh, Mm, applied for provisional patent and we were safe on you know protecting our idea we I made a press release to let's say test the taste of the market about this technology a, a report was prepared by Amanda I believe she's in New Center and it was published in uh, Sun News, I believe, maybe May 2015. And the reaction for this news was really unbelievable. I think uh, after a week, it just spread it all around the world. And a very, I mean, well now websites and news centers like Science Daily, a, a, the other was R&D Magazine, the other was uh, Physics Website. These are just uh, some few very well-known ones that I mentioned. That, 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 had, that had to be incredibly exciting to see all of your, your hard work recognized in that way. Uh, yeah, and they just uh, republished uh, this news and later 
all the web blogs and uh, you know lower branches of the news started to republish in it. And I got plenty of um, requests for new I mean, interviews and uh, even uh, maybe one of them, which is very important for me, is Chemical Engineering Magazine. <coughs> which, <coughs> which, uh, which magazine is that? Chemical Engineering. Oh, Chemical Engineering. Yeah, magazine. It is, uh, I mean, in, in, in close relation to my <laughs> field of study as a uh, well-known I'm a magazine over there. And uh, Columbia Chronicle, these are the, uh, the uh, centers that actually asked for new interview. And I believe at least it was uh, translated into 10 languages. Wow, so, that is, well, that's incredible. And later we got plenty of even contacts from the industries to get to know to our, uh, our material and if they can, you know, apply our materials uh, in their uh, industries. Yes, actually the uh, uh, reaction for this news was huge and incredible. Wow. So we would say that people really love this, this idea. Yeah, it, 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 it's like I said, it seems like it, clearly we're on the right track just by the the yeah. amount of uh, the amount of buzz that this has, has garnered in all the different uh, magazines, journals, newspapers as you were talking about. Um, I want to I want to go back real quick to the uh, the NSF I Corps uh, mm -hmm. group. Uh, did did you work with them to to receive any grants? Yes, uh, we submitted a proposal and we got some fifty k to enter to this program. It covered the expenses of, you know, a, a, attending in the, all those, I mean, workshops and they, that they had and we uh, supported us to, to make a hundred interviews into six weeks. <laughs> wow, that, that's quite the junket. <laughs> it was a condensed and huge program, you know, the uh, uh, they just forced us to do that. <laughs> it means that we should have done at least fifteen interviews a week. Wow. Well, I, I hope you at least had your coffee for that for that round of interviews because that sounds like quite the marathon. <laughs> yeah, it was really a marathon, you know, and it paved the way really to understand what's going on in the commercial scale uh, with respect to carbon capture and storage because what we were doing was in you know in the corner of the labs and um, to understand what's going on outside and how what 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 what's the gain and what's the pains of the people that are need needing material for capturing carbon dioxide was important that we could understand with this program that's 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 great. I mean, I I would assume that you just have to you have to feel an immense amount of pride around your work because it, it sounds like it's going to do a lot to help the world. I can say yes. <laughs> really, it was uh, I, I, unbelievable for me when I started this idea. I didn't even I couldn't even imagine that it could just reach this stand. You know. Well, <laughs> well that's 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 so great. Well, and and congratulations. Thank you um, so. Much. So on the, on the, I'm sure I'm sure getting grants is, is interesting to a, a good deal of people out there who may be watching this. Did you receive any other grants or opportunities? Yes, actually, the NSFY core program um, uh, was a program to, for commercialization. You know, uh, it it, it provides the the, mm, the resources that we need to have to to systematically follow up this program in the commercial scale. But on the other hand, we needed uh, uh, some resources to develop our idea uh, technically. I mean, as I mentioned, it was not one, one material. It was a series of material that, that we developed. So we needed to complete our library of material and uh, work in the lab. So we applied for a grant um, from EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, and we got 100K uh, from that resource. And now we are working on developing our idea in the lab, and it's it, it's for a year. Oh wow, that's that's fantastic! It seems like it's been it's been quite the transformation. Like you said, you were kind of 
you're working in the, the corner of the lab and now you're you are in the spotlight yeah yeah it it it. Uh, i think it just jumped out <laughs> jumped us you know through the air you know now but now uh, if you just google uh, the name my name and our team you may find more than 1000 um, hit in google yeah i i know the uh, the amount of materials that were just sent over to me uh just like hey, if you if you want to find out more about Nas uh, nasser before you sit down with him here you go <laughs> uh, and that just small uh, that just small snippet had so much information um, yeah, so so yeah. clearly your your uh, your research is has been has been well documented by many different outlets so yeah i i, I definitely implore our listeners if, if you're more interested in what uh, nasser has worked on uh, it's not hard to find out more about it <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and i'm happy with that actually uh, uh, the major reason to start to this project is just to help mitigating the global warming problem. And if I can do that one, it is really the final goal. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I feel like you've, you're, 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 you're there. You're, if you're not, you're, it sounds like you're very close. So, yeah, yeah. So, well. I uh, need to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, any, any closing thoughts, Nasser, before we, uh, before we end? I, Maybe acknowledging is the thing that I need to do. Really, I was not alone. I'm not talking about a big team that worked together to make this one happen. The idea was from my side, but first, uh, my uh, team of in inventors, you know, Dr. Gassimi, first and last one, because he was the one that supported me trusted in me and my idea and encouraged me and in introduced all these resources like Arrowhead to me. And Dr. Uh, Rastegari and Dr. Fudazi, that, uh, the other two, I mean, uh, inventors that helped me. And second, Arrowhead, and especially Terry Lombard. She was a wonderful lady, you know, she was very supportive. She was my mentor in uh, in. Yeah, I core program, that condensed program that I talked about, and other crews of uh, a Arrowhead that helped me to, you know, protect my idea, helped me to go through I core program and all these news releases and even this is the OUG, and finally other crews of uh, IWM work. They were very supportive. There are lots of people that are working over there and serving us to just uh, comfortably follow our uh, researches over there. And um, maybe the last one is KME department and the group of people over there that helped us. Now that's, that's, it, 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 it clearly was a, a, a large collaboration. Yeah, and and exactly. it's it's nice to see it all pay off. So, um, yeah, exactly. Well, well, thank you again for your time, Nasser, and uh, and I look forward to, to 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 following this and seeing seeing how it goes with the uh, the commercialization of uh, of your new tech. So, okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, wonderful, and uh, thank you everyone for for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Have a good one.